Well, hello there, Tom Green coming back at you with some Figma goodness. And today's goodness starts off an exploration of the auto layout feature of Figma. There are times I wish somebody would explain to me why this silly business seems to have lost its rearview mirror. Yes, Figma's auto layout is an amazing feature. Yet with all the hype around it and the tutorial showing how to use it, nobody is asking, why is it there? So before I start, here's why. Between 2000 and 2005, cell phones started sprouting browsers. And in 2001, Compaq introduced a rudimentary Windows-based tablet and phones started sprouting keyboards. Naturally, a lot of web designers started seeing their sites pop up on these devices. And to be honest, well, it wasn't pretty. It was cool, but it wasn't pretty. Websites either fell apart or were simply resized down to fit the screens. Did I mention there were a number of proprietary operating systems such as Symbian, which showed up on Nokia devices and got picked up by a ton of other device manufacturers? This was also the golden age of Flash. And naturally, there were a number of Flash players trying to keep up with the number of devices. The upshot was web designers were driven up a wall, across the ceiling, and down the other wall, trying to make their work fit everything from desktops to cell phones to Palm Pilots. Adobe's Device Central, shown here, tried to help developers cope. But to me, it was a Tower of Babel. Then it got really bad. When the iPhone arrived, followed in 2.10 with the introduction of the iPad, things may have gotten just a little bit easier. The iPad may have leveled out the insanity due to the overwhelming adoption of the iPhone and iPad. But designers and developers had a huge problem dropped in their laps. They had to create a variety of site versions to fit the iOS devices, not to mention BlackBerry devices, Windows OS devices, Nokia devices, Android devices, and so on, and you get the picture. In 2010, Luke Rabluski published an article in .NET Magazine that basically said, you're doing it all wrong. Start with mobile and work your way out to desktop. Needless to say, designers saw the wisdom of this claim, and that is when responsive design really took hold and CSS really took off. It is also around this time when web design software such as Adobe's Dreamweaver or Adobe's Edge Reflow shown here, introduced the concept of breakpoints, those colored lines you see at the top, which automatically adjusted the page content based on screen width or viewport. Based on one single design, one could add breakpoints to design a mobile page, adjust the content to fit a tablet, and adjust it again to fit a web page. The black art needed was determining where are the breakpoints located? Once responsive design took hold, a couple of new approaches arrived, and they essentially ignored breakpoints. Fluid design, which smoothly contracts or expands based upon viewport width, and adaptive design, which essentially uses different designs for different viewports. Regardless of whether it is responsive adaptive or fluid, the underlying principle is content needs to adjust to the viewport. In short, each element in a frame needs to adjust smoothly to a change in frame size based on the target devices or the screens chosen. This is where auto layout comes into play. And now you know why it is there. In the next video, we'll explore the fundamentals of auto layout. And in the one following it, we'll actually use it to format a card. As you work with it, you might want to keep in mind the rocky road traveled to the arrival of this rather whizzy feature and where it is going. And where is it going? Well, ovens, refrigerators, crock pots, vehicles, and even vehicle dashboards as the Internet of Things takes hold. Truly fascinating times are ahead of us.